Somebody just pray. Come and pray. We bless you. We bless your name. We bless you. We bless your name, mighty God. We bless your name, mighty Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Jesus, come on, worship the master, worship the king. He's worthy of the praise, he's worthy of the glory, he's worthy of the honor, he's worthy of your praise. Jesus. Oh God, you're worthy. You're worthy. Somebody just lift your hands wherever you are and just worship the Master tonight. Just give him glory. Just give him glory. Just give him praise. Just give him honor. God bless you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you tonight. I want to welcome you as you're coming into this prophetic time. The presence of the Lord is with us. The presence of the Lord is here. And whatever you need, God is going to meet you at that point tonight. I want to welcome you and I want to give God praise because what you're about to be a part of is a life-changing prophetic moment is a what a life-changing prophetic moment in other words God is going to speak to you and that moment why is it life-changing is going to cause change to take place in your life to be initiated Hallelujah. and then to take place yes. and so just know tonight that you're not coming in here in vain but you're coming in praise God because the spirit of the mightiest God has made this time possible for you. I want you to take your phones and I want you to send some people a message and let them know that their life is about to change. Their time of deliverance is at hand. Their time of healing is at hand. And so please, quickly, 
amen just amen send that and let somebody know tonight that God is going to change them he's going to deliver them he's going to set them free some people have gone to sleep already maybe you just call their number and tell them to wake up amen because God is going to bless them and while you're doing that tonight I want to welcome all of you I want to worship the Lord with that sound change me but I want to thank God for all of you that are coming in praise God Diane thank you all of you that are coming in Alicia Burnett praise God all of you that are coming in praise God Markeisha all of you I love you tonight Caroline all of you that are coming in from all over the world tonight may the Lord bless you tonight may he bless you may he bless you amen abundantly may he bless you wholeheartedly Faye may the Lord bless you tonight praise God all of you everywhere you are no matter which platform you're turning in on tonight I believe that something great is going to happen for you because you are here thank you Jesus so do it quickly do it quickly do it quickly those of you that are on whatever platform you're on amen God is talking to you tonight and he's going to bless you by his grace and by his power so thank you so much for being with us may the Lord bless you may he bless you real good thank you Jesus so let's just worship him while some people are still sending out their texts hallelujah thank you Jesus tonight we're talking about self-deliverance self-deliverance how to be delivered amen from every torment every demon thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Let's just lift those hands. Yeah. Change me inside, change me out. Oh Lord. Rearrange me till I look in myself. Just like you. Change me inside. Change me out. Oh Lord. Rearrange me till I look in a sound just like you. Change me inside, change me out. Oh Lord, somebody sing it. Come on. Rearrange me till I look in a sound just like you. Change me inside, change me out. Oh. Rearrange me till I look in a sound just like you. I wanna be changed. I wanna be changed. Never ever wanna be the same. I wanna be changed. Take my life, let it be rearranged. Take my life, let it be rearranged. I wanna be changed. Is this anybody prayer tonight? Never ever wanna be the same. Take my life and let it be rearranged. Lift those hands and say, Take my life and let it be rearranged. Change me from the inside, change me out. Oh, Lord. Rearrange me till I look in the side.
Somebody clap your hands tonight and give Hallelujah. Him Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. Anybody's prayer tonight? Yes. Is anybody's prayer? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Anybody need a real change? Yes. Yes. Now I'm serious now. Do you really need a change? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So I believe that everybody needs a change tonight. So let's get right into our time of sharing and. Um, for those of you that may be coming in for the very, very first time, welcome. And may God bless you for being here. I believe that something great is going to happen just because you tune in. Praise God. Somebody say, because I tune in, because you tune in. Something great is going to happen. And that's just the way it is. You know, the word of God says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So, amen. Then he says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So when you refuse to get knowledge... Praise God. Amen. You're destroying yourself. And it doesn't mean that knowledge is not available. It's just that you refuse to, to apply it or to take it and to benefit from it. So God is speaking very precise and very profound. Let me just say this before I go any further. These are very profound times. These are very prophetic times. People of God. And these are what we will call you know, the word of God declares about the end times or it talks about perilous times. And Jesus said, perilous times were going to come. And then he said, men will become lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And so we see the time that we're moving into where people are becoming more in love with themselves. People are becoming more, um, more tied to themselves. And so because of that, because of the times that we are in, what is happening is that, amen, the Bible said, um, hell has enlarged herself. But it also said that Satan knows that he has but a short time. So because he knows the times are short, amen, he is now intensifying his, his reach. He's now expanding his reach. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Now, you're going to see in these times, you're going to see an increase in wickedness. You're going to see an increase in wickedness, an increase in evilness. You're going to see just, you know, a whole lot of people or a lot of, amen, people that are going after the, and I want to use, amen, darkness, not in terms of darkness being, amen, evil, but I'm talking about the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of of darkness but I'm talking about it in the, in the light of the sense that said because God also created the darkness yes. in the book of Genesis we see it very clear where God created the darkness and then he created the, the, the light and he called it day am I talking to somebody yes. he was creating time he was putting time in place yes. so and, and to measure and to separate the night seasons and so he, he created darkness. But when I'm speaking about darkness, the kingdom of darkness now, I'm talking about a satanic kingdom that is established and that is set up to wreak havoc and to cause pain in the lives of people everywhere. So now I want to talk to you tonight because how do you know that wickedness has increased and evilness has increased in the earth? You don't have to go far. You can just go right on social media and things that used to be secretive, things that once used to be um, hidden is now in the open. So what we would have defined as a cult or we would have said that this thing is an occult and, and the word occult means twisted or the word cult means hidden or covered. It ain't covered no more. <laughs> is anybody understanding me tonight? So what you would have defined cult as being, amen, covered and occult as being hidden, it ain't hidden no more. 
So it's in your open, it's in your face, it's everywhere. So if you go on some other social media platforms and maybe some of these ones that we're even on, like this one or TikTok or any other stuff, you'll see people practicing witchcraft right in open face. And they are no longer hiding their wickedness. They are practicing their witchcraft right in front of you. They are flashing their tyrant's cut. In fact, they are live 24-7. And, you know, we were talking just before we came and, uh, earlier, and my kids were saying to me, they were like, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I know that wickedness is out there. But they were saying, look at this, look at that. And they were just showing. And people are going in and, and learning how to use tarot cards. And now this is like a big money-making business where people are just using a deck of demonic cards to read your life. And it's a, it's a game of luck and chance. So whatever card they pull out of that deck, and they're saying, look, you're going into happiness. I see, because see everything on this card, people are laughing, people are smiling. So you're going into happiness. And then, oh, this one here, you're going into a season of, or oh, you're on the right pathway. Because look, this card that they pull out is dealing with pathways. I'm dealing with these in this month, in this season, in this last quarter of the year because the Lord said to us amen that to tell the people that this is time to truly be set free from demonic oppression and demonic intrusion and why is there so much evil in the world I want to tell you in a minute why so much evil exists but in Isaiah 5 and 14 is the scripture I quoted earlier it says therefore hell has enlarged herself hell has done what enlarged herself and has opened her mouth without measure so what is this saying tonight it's talking about hell is a, a is in this invisible realm and that is where amen the judgment of God has been designated pre-designated amen for Satan and his and his entourage but even people the Bible said the wicked shall also be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God but now I want to show you hell in a different light tonight because it's not just the physicality of the invisible realm that will be a man once made physical, invisible, <laughs> that's called hell. But it's now hell has enlarged herself. It's speaking about a concept, even though it's real and if there is a hell, are you getting this? But he's now talking about the agenda of hell. Huh? The agenda of hell. The modus operandi of hell. The functionary of hell has enlarged herself. Hell has already made herself big. Hell is making room because it's trying to expand its reach. It's trying to lengthen its courts and strengthen its stakes. It's trying to grab as many people as it can possibly grab to bring into its grip and stronghold. And so if you as a child of God or a Christian is not awake and alert, now it's, well, it means it's making space for you. <laughs> Are you getting this tonight? So how is it doing? How, why is hell enlarging itself? Because it's trying to now enlarge its concepts, enlarge its influence. It's trying to become more digital. It's trying to become more cutting edge. It's, time, it's trying to become, praise God, I'm going to use the word, more versatile. Yes. Wow. Hell Come on. is trying to become more what? Versatile. 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 By whatever means necessary, Come on. I'm coming to get you. We're going to get you. We're going to introduce you to our sour sweet stuff. Our bitter sweet stuff. And that's going to cause you to buy into our plan. So this is the reason why hell has enlarged itself. I'll tell you why right now. Anybody want to know why? Yes, ma'am. It truly enlarged itself. Yes, prophet. Because Christians and you and some other people, some of you are not doing what you can do, all that you can do to stop its enlargement. I repeat, hell is getting larger. Criminals are getting away with, with crime because people see the criminal. They see Junior Robin, my pop store, 
And then the police come. They say, we ain't seen nothing. Am I talking to somebody? They see somebody getting beat up. And they speed off because they say, child, I ain't about to get killed for nobody. So are you getting what I'm trying to say? So the enlargement is coming because people are refusing to take responsibility for something that they could prevent. So hell is getting bigger in a sense because why? You are not doing what you are supposed to be doing. Wow, that's, that's so because you are not praying the way you're supposed to be praying. You are not, amen, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Hell is now just getting bigger. Party in the backyard. Party on the curve. Party, in, you understand what I'm saying? You got your small little radio turned down in your house. You don't want to know what you praying. You got your little transistor. And so the people down in the block party, they got this bigger bunga bunga and the church is now saying, because we don't want to offend anybody. So what is happening now? Because it's getting larger, demons, more and more evil spirits are being released. More and more demon spirits are being what? Are being released. Yes, ma'am. That's right. And where are these demons going? What are they looking for? They're looking for a vacancy. Demons are looking for what? A vacancy. Demons are looking for vacancy. I want to see where there is an available place going home. I want somewhere, they want somewhere where they can take up an, a, a, a board. And so demons are, amen, evil spirits. Demons are spirits that don't have a demons. Of course, it's a spirit and it don't have a body. So we say it is a person without a body. Yes. That's the best way to describe a demon to you. So now what am I trying to show you tonight? But a demon is really an evil spirit, an unclean spirit. Now, some people, as you're flipping across this channel right now or coming across me on this set, you probably, the temptation is going to be to click out of here. But I want to give you tonight seven reasons why you need to stay right here. Come on. I, I will give you some reasons. Why you need to lock your dial and throw the remote away. Yes. Throw it in the garbage and so it can just stay right on this channel. Because you need to understand that, amen, there's something that is wreaking havoc in your life. And if you don't deal with that something. Last night I told the people, I said, listen, I see where something, I saw something watching you. And if you don't know what is watching you and how to deal with what's watching you, eventually the thing that's what's watching you is going to enter you. Yes. And it's then eventually going to kill you. Come on, and I begin to talk about a type of demons that were called familiar spirits. Yes. And that was called what? Familiar yes. spirits. And then they work with another group of demons that were called what? Monitoring spirits. And I begin to show some of you, praise God, that these spirits are so wicked in nature. That once they lock in on, onto you, they lock onto you like a probing device. Like a low jack in a car. Yes, ma'am. Like a GPS system. Oh, yeah. Are you people hearing me out here? Yes, ma'am. They lock into you like a GPS system. And what a monitoring spirit is sent to do is to watch your every move. Yes. So a familiar spirit now, witches work with familiar spirits. And these spirits that they work with, they will assign to you when you come to them or somebody comes to them with your picture, your name, your whatever. They will assign a monitoring spirit to watch your life because of themselves, that witch doesn't know anything. So this is why some of you feel sometimes like, I don't know why you get up and you sleep and you say, ah, you're up and close the blind because you say, feel like somebody looking at me. Is this true? So why? Because now if somebody is watching you, but the somebody is not always a human. It is a demon spirit that is sent to gather information from you. I don't know if my students are still with me tonight and if they can still hear me, but I wanted, I introduced them to something in our school of ministry. God bless you students. I'm glad to see some of you are still with me. God bless you. Welcome. I thought they'd gone already. We had our class earlier today. Let's give God a praise for them one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Welcome. So Hallelujah. what? Thank you, Prophet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Prophet. Hallelujah. So God bless you all. 
They are wide awake and kicking. So this is a noisy bunch, but listen, I want to help them anyhow. So this is now where you understand that if you're not careful, so hey guys, if you're coming in, you can at least go on to one of the networks and let me know which network you're on, okay? So let me know which you're on, if you're on uh, YouTube or Facebook or whichever network. Students, let me know which one you're on, amen. Just say something, prophetess, I'm right here, or I'm on this one, or I'm on whichever one. Can you do that for me real quick? Uh, amen. So I want to I want to go keep talking while I'm going to keep talking while you're doing that because I want people to understand that what is fighting you and if you what you don't know is what's killing some of you and what you don't know can kill you because why ignorance is the night of the mind. Ignorance is the night you you can you ever see somebody that is right downright ignorant and you trying to rescue them. And they're trying to tell you, it's okay, it's okay. You know, because now they're thinking you're trying to get something from them. So they ignore your help only to, this, to realize now a thunderstorm meet them right outside there. And now when they see the first lightning, they're bombing on your door. And you're like, it's okay. It's okay. Because now you ignore the help early on. So I'm trying to say to people, so we started this, I've been delivering people. For like, amen, for so many years. I want to say for decades. Amen, praise God. Amen. I've been casting, I've been cast out so many demons in my one lifetime, praise God. I don't know which at which point I stopped counting. But I can tell you, there's some people that you can look, you never judge a book by its cover, y'all. Those of you that feel one day that God's going to use you to cast out demons, do not ever judge a book by its cover. Because I went to deliver some people and the person looked calm, cool, and collective. And as soon as I say, Poof, come out, all I saw was thunder, lightning, and every day they tear up the whole <laughs> carpet, fling chairs everywhere. And so when you're going to deliver someone, you should never just judge the delivery of that person on the fact that they look calm. Because you cannot tell how a demon look from the outer parents. To, to, to spot a demon, you have to look. There are certain characteristics I know I have to look for. First of all, well, I have an eye that is able to see in the spirit. So I have a spiritual eye that can see in the spirit. As a servant of God, do you get what I'm saying? Not everyone that casts out demons have the ability to see in the spirit. Do you get what I'm saying? Some people just can cast out demons, but they can, they may be not prophetic. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, so if you are a prophet or a prophetic person, you are at a small advantage. Should I say a big advantage? Yes. Because you have the ability to see. You have the ability to discern. You have the gifts of the spirit, so you're able to know that this demon is present in this person. Yes. But if you even if you don't have the gift of discernment or you're, or you're not a prophet, there are some signs or telltale signs that you can see right off the bat that that person is carrying a demonic intrusion, intruder in their life. And some of those things I will share with you later on as we go into our session tonight. But what do demons do? A demon is an unclean spirit. A demon is a, is a filthy spirit. Its motive is like its master to kill, steal, and destroy you. So a demon, one of the characteristics you will know that somebody is under the influence or, or, or the attack of a demon is because the first thing a demon does is it influences people's life. It does what? It influences somebody's life. So you can tell that that person is being influenced because they don't look the same way or they don't act the same way. So that is a telltale sign right off the bat. This person is being amen, attacked by a demon. Demons influence. Demons alter. They alter the way you're supposed to be. So let's just say you're supposed to be walking straight. Now you're walking like this. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, just as so you're supposed to be looking straight. Now your eye looking everywhere. Demons influence. Demons alter. They even alter people's posture. Are you getting me tonight? Now those of you that know that I've cast. Let me see your hand if I've ever cast out a demon out of you. If I've ever cast a demon out of you. Ever. I know everybody in here I have cast a demon out of. If I haven't cast out one of you yet, I want to ask, where have you been? 
I know I have cast demons out of every person in this place. I won't talk. If I was to open Zoom up, I have cast on more demons from these people on Zoom. <laughs> Unbelievably, like I'm talking about demons after demons after demons. There are times they would come on Zoom with a whole person they used to come with a tissue. They move from tissue to cup. I even saw someone took out a garbage tin the other day and was being delivered. I said, ah, what is this? <laughs> Who is that? Crispin, Crispin, I have the garbage winner. Oh my Lord. So these people, they are serious about their deliverance. Yes, ma'am. Let's give God a praise for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So this is now the time where you have to be willing to be delivered. So, you know, I have to ask that question again, right? Because I want to see out of, in my school who ain't never been delivered from me. If you haven't been delivered yet, you are in trouble. Because which means you are at the bottom of the class. You are at the back of the school. Because you know what I'm trying to say. You are not going to be used of God until every, even I myself. Come on, somebody. I have to go through a series of deliverance. Are you understanding this? Don't let me and apostle begin to talk. We all have to go through deliverance. And I'm telling you, this is the reason why people are being saying that they're call of God and they manifest in the wrong tag. They should have been manifesting right now. They should have been manifesting while you were manifesting. Somebody say, shame on you. So the time, so that there's a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. So this is why now God is saying you have to go past through the series of different levels of washing. This is why we're now calling it the purge. So because now, if you think you are so powerful, you are pitiful. So the purge is necessary. Why is God telling you you need self-deliverance? Because now it's to the point now where you have to make sure your calling is an election show. Come on, that you are being delivered. You're being washed. You're being cut out. You're being pressed out. You're being plunged out. Yes. You're being dug out. Come on. You're being purged. You're being pruned. Am I talking to humans tonight? You are talking, Prophetess. So the, the, the deliverance is very vital. It's very necessary. Deliverance simply means to be set free. A delivery is meaning now I am bringing something forward. It's like the birthing process with a woman who is pregnant. If the baby stays up in you, as much as you are anticipating that baby, you're going to die or the baby could die. If it goes past its delivery time. Am I talking to somebody? Have you ever seen a 10-month-old baby? A 10-month-old baby. A 10-month-old baby is huge. It almost looks like a toddler. Not only does it look like a toddler, some of them, they are wrinkled. And they come out looking angry. They all kept me up in there so long. You know, I, I, I'm hungry now. I want real food. You keep me there this long. <laughs> so you have a 10-month baby, and the 10-month baby is, is now wrinkled. The skin looks older than a 9-month. And just as bad as if a premature baby comes out, it has to be developed. So I'm just trying to say it's the same thing with your demonic possession, with your demons or being seized by demons. Now, everybody likes to ask me the question. Every time I come on set like this, everybody likes to ask me, can a Christian have a demon? No? Nobody want to ask me? Okay, let me just move right along. This would have been the strangest audience ever. If I've not ever asked that question, can a Christian have a demon? And I always answer you the same way I always answer you. That nowadays Christians can have whatever anything they want to have. If that's the way it seems, like Christians can have whatever they want to have, they can have it. You know, somebody say, "Have it your way." And now, should Christians have demons? No. But unfortunately, and if you're a Christian listening to me tonight, and if you think you got it all together, then you need to check yourself in again at this door tomorrow night at seven thirty p.m. Come on. Because I will prove to you that there's something in you that needs to come out of you. I will probe you. I will scan you in the realm of the spirit. And we will all discover 
that something was right there yes. under the cover. Come on. So, so a demon is an unclean spirit, is a wicked spirit, is an evil spirit. Demons do not respect humans. Demons does not respect ordinary humans. Is this true tonight? True. Demons do not respect ordinary humans. What do you mean by ordinary? I thought we were all ordinary. What is a uh, non-ordinary human? Demons does not respect ordinary humans. They don't respect humans that are just ordinary. They only respect extraordinary humans. They only respect what? Extraordinary humans. As long as you are an ordinary Christian, a demon say, ha, 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 bonjour. So it's now the demon just greets you in French, in Creole, he'll even speak Patois. Eh, eh, so demons don't respect ordinary Christians. Demons respect extraordinary Christians. Christians that are moving with power. Demons does not respect Christians who just pray our Father prayer. Not because you can pray a demon respect you. Demons, amen, only respect Christians who get prayers answered. Wow. <laughs> That's good. Is this true, Pastor? They only respect Christians who can get prayers answered. When your prayers cannot be answered, a demon say, I don't have no respect for you. You, you are the one that I, yes, I don't respect you. Uh, bless you. I don't respect you. I have no respect for you. Yeah. I have no toleration for you. Because I can see that you are a weak one. Yeah. You are going nowhere fast. Yeah. I can see you are about to shipwreck. Yeah. You are so afraid. Yeah. You don't have any confidence in your God. Yes. That's right, prophet. Come on. That's the way you're going. Where are you going? Sit down. Yeah. Let's go. Go in there and coming right back. You ready, Ben? Okay, then. Take a pill. Okay. Give him some water and sit down there. Let's go, guys. Come on. We got to hurry. Okay. All right, Mommy. So, out there. So, um, so what is going to happen is that God wants to do something for you that is going to change your life forever. God's going to do something for you that's going to turn your life around. If you don't get your life turned around, it's going to now be destroyed. Yes. So that's what Satan wants. He wants to what? Kill, steal, destroy. So let's go on. Christians can have whatever they want. It's not, there's no choice. If you want this, you want that. You Christians are getting what they want every time. But now, is getting what you want right? Is getting what you want good for you? I see Christian people say they're Christians and they drink. Does that make drinking right? I see Christians smoke and they say they are Christians. Does that mean that it's, it's right for you to smoke? No, no, it's not. It's going to kill you. So it is the same thing then with a demon. A demon is an unclean spirit. It's an evil spirit. It wants to destroy you. Demons have one motive out of operandi. To kill, to steal, and destroy. So now, you now, you can pick up a demon. Okay, you can attract a demon. Now you can pick up a demon, you can attract a demon, you can open the door to a demon. When you open the door to a demon, that is what we call legal rights. You have given the demon the legal rights to come in there. Yes, ma'am. So now let's go back to what I say, pick up a demon, attract a demon, or open the door to a demon. Okay, let me show you this now. So there are some things where demons will enter your life, and because of something you did, that is called when you have opened the door, you have given that demon legal right. So for an example then, sin. Okay, willful sin, practicing sin, living a life of fornication, doing, opening the doors of your eye gates to see things that is unrighteous or that is not holy. So when you begin to open a door, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you break a hedge, the serpent will bite you. Yes. Is this true tonight? Yes, so now when you open a door, a demon comes in. Now that is called what? Legal rights. You've given that demon legal rights to come in there. Yes. If you are fornicating, if you are, if you are consulting with witches, if you are consulting with psychics, you automatically open a door. Let me tell you something else. These people with all these charms and all these crystals, okay, when I say remove your charms or remove whatever, people thinking that I'm meaning the diamond they're wearing around their neck. No, that's not what a demon call is charm. 
a demon is charm is called the goods that that witch has placed on the person are you getting what I'm saying he has put a, a something there a mark on that person he has placed goods in the person body or in the person life so when I say remove your charms it is the goods it is the things that the enemy is using to keep you in bondage are you getting what I'm saying tonight so now that demon already knows that so what some people do now let's just say you go and you buy a charm you buy a crystal now you see these people wearing these big medallion crystals around their neck do you know why some of them are wearing it they're saying it's for good luck but what they don't know it is an open channel an open door for demons to walk straight through into their life are you people hearing this today yes, so when people go and they buy these charms they go online and uh, you have these people that are buying and scooping up these charms by the bowl full and sending them to people look you've gotten this one you've gotten this nice crystal star look you've gotten this nice uh, emblem you got the ring of the zumbo you got the ring of the zagoon you got the thing of the baboon hey you are crazy <laughs> the camera guy say what baboon yes i'm telling you they have gotten everything to themselves and they are now calling it some type of stupid something and people are jumping after it this thing shall bring you money you know this thing shall bring you good luck wear this right here then they say okay you want someone to love you put their name on the paper to the top put your name to the bottom circle their name put it in a jar with a candlestick seal the jar up with your saliva My God. <laughs> And then they tell you to put something else with it. Yeah. Put turmeric. Yeah. Your house is going to smell like curry powder. <laughs> put basil. And then you go to some people's house and they have sage everywhere. They are sage, this sage, that. They are bathing with sage. They are eating, you smell them in the bank, you say, what are you? Because it's now people are coming into all of you all are laughing, but this is true. true. People are coming into all this fetish and all of this thing. I'm trying to show you tonight how doors are being opened. I'm sure my students are taking notes tonight. How doors are being opened. And once you open a door, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you have done what? Broken the hedge. And once you break the hedge, a serpent bites you. Am I talking to someone tonight? Yes, ma'am. Somebody ought to type in your chat quickly. Amen. Do not break the hedge. Do not break the hedge. Do not break the hedge. Come on, I got to hurry now. I only got a few minutes left. So the Bible says, now how do we know about hedges? Remember when Job was, amen, in the place before God. The Bible said that Job, Satan came to attack Job. And he could not get to Job. Because he said to God, remember, Job is an upright man. He is, he's eschewing evil. He doesn't want to be around evil. He's trying to live righteous before you. He keeps all the holy days and the Sabbath days. He even gives arms for his children. And Satan says something to God that was shocking. He said, God said, go ahead and touch him. And he said, you know I can't touch him. And God said, why? And Satan said, because you have a hedge built around him that I cannot reach him. And so, in order for Satan to get to Job, God had to remove the hedge of protection. Now, God removed that hedge of protection. But there is a serious problem when you as a Christian removes the hedge of protection from over yourself yes, how is the hedge of protection moved from over you one may ask when you open the door to sin or you open the door to evil so whenever you open the door to sin or you open the door to evil and you begin to do things that is contrary to the word of God then you are now becoming what open to a serpent or a demon coming into your life and biting you yes, is this good or what tonight is anyone getting this tonight 
So, I, 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 so, so, so when you break the hedge, the serpent bites you. When you open the door, the, de the demons come in. So these are now when things happen, this is why we're talking about the purge. Because now there's some things that you did. There's some mistakes that you made that you can't blame nobody for. Now, one of the things my kids said to me the other day, and this was very interesting, and they said, they said, mama, they said, people are blaming demons for some of their problems. Can we blame a demon for every problem? Can we blame a demon for our ancestors? Can we continue to say it's the end? So what I'm seeing now, even in, in churches, is that a lot of people, they want to blame the ancestors for everything. They teach something, they say, it's the ancestors. <laughs> they fornicate, they say, it is my ancestors. <laughs> they get someone pregnant, it is the ancestral spirit. <laughs> Are you crazy? Do you not know that you have a mind of your own? So a demon will not be able to control your mind, your will, or your intellect, or your emotion unless you give yourself over to that. So when you give yourself over to that, now like I told you even last night, when you are to the place and you can tell me that I already cast the demons out. I saw all the demons left. But you are still manifesting the demon then it means I need to check you out in the mental arena or I need to check you out because what it means that that either you have given yourself over to that demon yes. or you are in the mental arena being challenged by that. Now there's something that we say in the law or in the courts of law that possession is what? 90%? Nine yes, ma'am. Nine tenths of what? Of the law. Of the law. Yes. Possession yes. is nine tenths of the law. Yes. Can anyone tell me what that means? I pray tell. That if you are, if you are holding the item, yes. if you caught with it in your possession, or you have it in your possession, the chances are you own it. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, so that's how it is. Now, do you really own it or not? Only Jesus knows. But because you are the one that's holding on to it, they say you, you own it. It's nine tenths. Of the law is this correct tonight yes, but i'm trying to show you something because some of you are holding on to demons yes. even the ones we already cast out we are thinking that you are truly possessed you have possession of it so possession is <laughs> nine tenths of the law yes. that is now saying you have it you own it right. so but now if we cast it out then now, and you should let it go out. Let it go out. Remember I told the people last night, let it go out. Yes. When I call on this earth, I have already cast out hurt out of you 500 times. How much hurt you got? I need to ask how much hurt you have. You are not hurt, you are damaged. <laughs> Is this true? Yes. Because if, if after 10 weeks later, My God. 10 months later, My. how long you been in this church? 10 years. 10 years and I am still casting out hurt. Come on. Either I don't know what I'm doing and that devil is a liar. I know very well what I'm doing. Or you have a soul tie to the spirit of hurt. And every time I call out hurt and pain, you manifest the sin. I thought we got over this from last week. <laughs> every time you think of me which means now there's something that needs to happen to disassociate you yes. from that hurt yes, is it really a demon or is it an association oh, wow. to the problem yes. that happened to you 10 years ago oh, I'm going very good. deep now that's good. is anyone getting this tonight yes, so are people still possessed with the demons or are they just still associated with the event? Okay, let me just ask you. I'm, please, I'm coming. People are saying, prophetess, oh my God. Yes, I'm coming. And you need to wake some more people up. Amen. So I don't waste my oxygen. Hurry up. Because some people you know, all the Jonah above them, they need this information. It's all right. And Ray Ray, all them people who are holding up people, drugstores and pharmacy, and holding people at gunpoint and robbing people, they need to know they need to get rid of that bad habit of robbing. Yes. Now, watch in our session last night. Uh, the lady, as she raised up her card, the first thing that she had on her card 
was alcoholic. Alcohol. Yes. And she said, I want to be delivered from alcohol. Yes. Nobody saw that coming. Because the woman is so beautiful yes. and so dicty and so well groomed and well dressed. So that would have been the last thing on your mind. Yes. So you would have probably been trying to call out arrogance or something else if you were a premature little amateur, little delivery person. But now, I already saw this from the last time, from the last service. Yes. So I already knew it was on that card. I already knew that alcoholic was going to be somewhere on that card. I was the one who told her yes. what her problem was. You sure did, Prophet. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So, but I'm so happy that she was able to acknowledge it herself yes. this time. Yes. Now, now let's, let's take a pin on that, that case. Let's go to the other case with my mom, with my spiritual daughter, whose husband was murdered in New York from 1982. Yes. 1982, 42 years ago. 40 years ago, sorry. And now the, the daughter is still emotionally painful about that. Now they're watching me right now. These are all my spiritual sons and daughters. Everybody's watching me. But I'm just trying to show you how these people, praise God, been delivered. From 10 years ago, their life would have been further and better. You right. And somebody getting me tonight. Yes, ma'am. Is anybody getting me around this world tonight? Yes, So I'm trying to give you a new perspective on deliverance. That there are some demons that are, yes, that hit your life and enter your life. And some of them come to kill you instantly. And then there are some that come to kill you slowly. There are some demons that come to kill you when? Instant. Instantly. Instant coffee. Then there are some that are slow brewed. <laughs> it's just dripping slowly. It wants to take its time. time because why? Huh? It, it, it has its own time oh, yeah. that it's going to take to kill you. Clock, come on, somebody. And, you, and, you, and it, because it's, now, it's not in a hurry, it already knows it's going to let you suffer. So I'm saying tonight now, listen to me very carefully. We're talking about if you're just coming in, welcome, God bless you. Tonight we're dealing with, amen, demons. And the reason why you need to be able to, after you've been delivered to now, go through self-deliverance. Yes. I'm just, I'm this now, it's not that if you, somebody just run off the battle and never went through a deliverance. Because every deliverance, amen, is at a different level. And every, you cannot say, I've never done no deliverance when any two deliverance was just alike. Never. I, I'm talking about even in the same family. Ten people could be in one family. And each one of their deliverance is totally different. It may be similar but different. Are you getting this tonight? So it has to now, amen, be to the place where you understand what is attacking you, what is tormenting you, what has entered you, amen, what you have opened to. And then how are we going to get it out? So let me go back to what I was saying. Now, whatever I said, some demons want to kill you instantly. Some demons want to kill you painstakingly. It wants to take its time. It's not in a hurry. It wants you to suffer. Yes. So let me just show you something. Now. But if you can make a decision that the demon, whatever his nature is, where he come for instant or prolong, your job is you want to get him out. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, you want to get him out. So, because why? Demons crave human beings' body. A demon's greatest, amen, desire is give me a body, give me a body, give me a body, give me a body. I want a body, I want a body, I want a body, I want a body, I want a body. Demons crave human bodies. Why do they crave a human body? Because taking possession of a human body is where they get to carry out their master's ill wishes and desires. Come on, prophet. Are you understanding this? Yes, ma'am. If they had a body in the first uh, uh, time, they no longer have a body, so they crave a human body. They already know that we have to depopulate the earth, and the best way to do that is to take possession of some human beings yes. and cause them to do silly things, yes. and then destroy them. And then if, you, if, if they can't get no one else to kill you, they cause you to self-destroy yourself. That's right. So this is what I call self-affliction. Self-affliction is when you open the door yourself yes. and you allow a demon spirit to come in your life. And this demon spirit, as it entered your life, 
you are afflicting yourself. So you see people that cut themselves, you see people that wound themselves, you see people that, you know, that live all type of crazy lifestyle, they smoke weed, they drink all their, you know, liquor, they do all of these risky things. So you are self-afflicting yourself. And a demon loves self-afflictors. They love people that are self-afflictors because why? They know you're not going to live long. Wow. They already know your, your time is short. Yeah. It would not, would they could not find someone else crazy to do, they know they're going to get you to do it. Yeah. So they say, here's a rope, here's a, here's a cord, go climb on up. And so that's the way it is. Now, so let's go quickly. How am I doing? Am I helping somebody so far? Yeah. Let me know if I'm helping you, anyone. Yeah. Say something to me. Let me know if I'm helping you. Okay, so this is now the, way, the reason why. So Christians should not tolerate demons. So you can talk about now. We can talk about these personal demons. Yes, yes, personal yes, yes, demons. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up there? Old conversation. <laughs> I tell you, prophetess, I know what you're talking about. They have a whole conversation with you, prophetess. I know, right? <laughs> So watch this now. So what was I saying? A demon, yeah. minister people are still watching us on the other areas. They're getting blessed by this. Yes, Anybody sir. at all? Tremendously blessed. Huh? Yes, prophetess. Okay. So we give God praise for yes, that tonight. Yes, ma'am. Tremendously blessed prophetess. Both Facebook and YouTube. Mm. Oh my gosh, prophetess. We've got people saying, prophetess, you are helping me. This is so powerful. Prophetess, you are helping us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody say, I'm understanding. We have Jenny, we have Michelle, we have Shirley, Agnes, Donnell, Dorothy, Amanda, Marilyn, Tanya, Naomi, that's on YouTube. On Facebook, we have Cassandra, we have Adina, amen. We have Melissa, Diana. She, Diana is saying, prophetess, you are teaching me. Amen, hallelujah. Melissa is saying, amen, amen, amen. She is coming in agreement, prophets, with what you're teaching. Doris is saying, prophetess, you are really helping me. Amen. Carmen is saying, yes, you are helping. Glenda is saying, prophetess, this is wonderful. Praise Amen. God. My God. Amen. And it keeps Amazing. going, prophetess. They I keep going. Is yes, that YouTube it keeps going. Or Facebook or which platform is that that people That was uh, Facebook. Okay. That I last um, called off. Mm -hmm. Felissa, she's also on Facebook saying, this is such a blessing. Amy is saying, yes, I'm understanding. Okay. Sharita is saying, this is food for my soul, prophetess. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I wonder which Sharita that is. I wonder, prophet. Amen. Amen. So this is wonderful. I'm glad that you people are being blessed by it. Yes, prophetess. I'm going to just go on because of the end of interest of time. So I want to just show you something tonight. So a demon is what we will call a disembodied spirit. Yes. It is a person without a body. And it, 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 demons are like what you would consider like gases or vapor or smoke. Are you getting me? So a demon or a demon spirit is, but it is a personality. It is not a piece of rock. A demon is not a piece of rock. A demon is not a piece of iron. A demon is like gases. So it doesn't need a door to enter through. It can go straight through the wall. It is a spirit being. Are you understanding this? It is a part of a kingdom that is very organized. So the system of a demonic, demonic kingdom is very organized. They know who their master is. They, they communicate. They have a language. Yes. They speak to each other. Yes. They even speak to you if you're not careful. You're right. In town. And you say, yes, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> People are talking to demons. They hear demons quicker than they hear an angel. So I want to now get my goal and my assignment is to try to get some of you to the place, amen, where you are seeing and hearing the, from the invisible realm of the, of the things of God. Yes. I want you to start seeing angels more than you see demons. Come on, prophet. Oh, yes. I want you to start saying an angel of the Lord came and visited me. Yes. Praise the Lord, prophetess. And the angel of the Lord, amen, gave me an instruction. I don't want to hear every Christian telling me how many demons have entered their life and entered their room. So this is why the Lord has said, I want you to understand how to be delivered from them. Yes. Hallelujah. 
I mean, we are exonerating, sorry, exalting demons as if demons are so powerful and so mighty. You know, when we were in kindergarten, my kids used to go to kindergarten and they used to say, oh, my God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God can. But now it's not they're saying, my demon's so big, so strong and so. A demon's now so powerful. How did demons become so powerful in people's lives? Anyone can tell me. Because you have made them your own. You have taken possession of them. So possession is nine tenths of the law. You are holding on to them. You have taken ownership of them. And so the demons, some of them really want to go. Especially when they come and follow you here to church. They want to go. And people are holding on to them. Where are you going? Who am I going to drive home with? Who is sleeping with me tonight? I'm scared to be in that house by myself. Are you crazy? So God wants you to do what? Cast out your demons. He wants you to be delivered from your demons. So demons ensnare. Demons ensnare. Demons are deliberate. They will ensnare you. Put that inside your chat. They will ensnare you. They ensnare you. Demons alter your perception. Demons alter your what? Perception. What does that mean? You start seeing things warp up. Instead of you seeing things in the way it is, all of a sudden you start seeing things crazy. Come on. Come on, somebody. You thinking everybody trying to kill you. Or the people that are trying to bless you, you think they, they waking witchcraft on you. And you, they're having lunch with the witches. So demons warps your perception. Yes. A demon warps the perception. Yes, demons cause, alters your perception. It alters your whole life. So you, even the way that you're supposed to, to conduct yourself, you don't conduct yourself anymore. You see people who are being overtaken by demons. You see the way they come, like, oh, they dress different. It causes you to do different things. Like, yes. you, so all of a sudden, you have a million tattoos. There's no more space left. Yes. And then you're looking down at yourself, trying to figure where else can you put one. <laughs> are you crazy? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> so demons will cause you to do silly things. It will cause you to do silly things. So when demons will take over, you will understand, okay, you are passing here, passing there. But when you are passing, 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 passing everywhere, is it possible that there's something going on on the inside of you that is challenging you? Are you getting what I'm trying to show you now? So this is why I'm saying people need to be delivered. So demons now, they come and they will, they will now harass you. They harass you. Demons torment. Demons do what? They torment. They torment. So people's minds are tormented. Because a demon is present. These will cause things like anxiety. The person cannot sleep. The person cannot stay one place. The person is, is, is fidgety. The person feels like I gotta go. Or it, 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 it causes the mind to become erratic, racing yes. thoughts. Yes. So people are over or under an attack of a demon. They, you see them, they feel feeling anxiety. Or they're feeling nervousness. Unusual or extreme nervousness. I'm not talking about if you see a black panther. <laughs> In your backyard. Jesus. In the night. No, that is real. Are we getting this? That is the time to do what? Run. I'm talking about nervousness for no reason now. Yes, ma'am. Are we getting this tonight? Nervousness. You see why I need to just do these things by myself? Nobody in the room. Just me by myself. Okay, so watch this now. So demons will, will create a cause of euphoria or euphoric experiences. They create phobias. Phobias. Now you all know, I wrote a book on demons. So I can tell you one million things that demons do. I deliver, deliver every single week more demons than anyone can shake a stick at. And I'm not saying this boastfully. I've been given the grace from the grace of God. Jesus told me in Mark 16, these signs shall follow us that believe. In my name you shall cast out demons. You shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You will speak in tongues. You will, all these things. So I do it. I take my Bible literally. So demons do what? What was the last one I gave you? Demons do what? Create phobias. I'm so happy you're here, sweetie. The rest of these people who are comatose, I don't know. Amen. You all are not comatose. So watch this now. Demons do what? They create phobias. Phobias. And people become afraid of things. And then they can also cause you to become hallucinating. Demons cause you to even see things that don't even exist. They create shams. 
they will create shams. The demons can also blind you. Demons can cause sickness. Demons can cause disease. They will give you HIV and you've never been intimate with anyone before. Is this true? Prophetess, I don't know about that one. <laughs> They'll do anything they want to do yes. if you permit them to do it. Are you understanding? Yes, so now watch this. So a demon is an evil spirit, is a disembodied spirit. God said you want to be delivered from them. So you have to be careful because they also cause you to self-afflict self yourself. Yes. They will cause you. That's why people are cutting themselves lately. People are hungry for their own blood. This is why people are, um, you know, the, the affliction where to, to, the, to the point where people just figure, you know, they, it's not worth living. They burn themselves. Some people burn themselves. Some people do things that, that are so painful, like they hate themselves for no reason. And this are all coming from the, the powers of demons. Yes. So God wants you to be delivered from them. Amen. So now, how do you be delivered from the demons? Because I, 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 did I give you enough so that you'll understand demons? Yes. Okay. So whether it's a deaf and dumb spirit, whether it's an unclean spirit, whether it's classified as a foul spirit, okay, all are demons. So the demon now that attacks you, a demon that can attack you, amen, is the same demon that can afflict you. Are you understanding? Yes. And the same demon that can attack you, can afflict you, can also influence you if you don't cast it out. Yes. So it will have you going its way and acting out its manners or mannerisms. Come on. So that's why you need to be delivered from them. Now, a prophet, a pastor, a servant of God, can, God can use to deliver you. And you've seen the many different ways yes. that I have shown you I can deliver you. So, and I can, I've also shown you now, also there are some levels of demon possession or being seized by demons. That demon is not going to move just by you saying go. The demon has to know that there is a greater level of authority yes. that is in the name of Jesus. Yes. But also there are some of them, you have to speak a language of the spirit that will break their code and yes. move them out. Hallelujah. Is this true? Yes. So they're not just going to move because you say, ah, go. They, you have to wear, go in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to go into a, the language, into the mystery language of the spirit. Or some people call it the mystical language of the spirit to remove them from where they have they tied you up. Yes. Because there was not just one covenant or two covenants. Some people are bound by many covenants. Are we getting this? Yes, so I told you last night there's a familiar spirit. Okay, this spirit is the one that is watching you from the outside. But there's another spirit called familial spirit that comes down the bloodline. And as that spirit is called familial that comes down the bloodline, that's already in your family. Yes. Your great-grandmother was a witch. Yes. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Your grandfather was a, was a mason, was a warlock. So this now how they have got and come into your family. So you cannot just sit around eating cookies and cream and just thinking, oh, the demons are just going to evaporate just like that. No, demons are very territorial. That's another thing you need to know. Yes, ma'am. That's number 15. I'm going to give you 15 things about demons. They are very territorial. So which means if somebody has already allowed them to come in or you've allowed them to come in, they are not just moving like that. They want to, to, for them to leave, there has to be a power that's greater than them. Jesus said the strong man will not move unless a stronger than he comes in and drives him out. On, Somebody should give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say one stronger than he. One stronger than he. One stronger than he. One stronger than he. So now, this thing now, so the demon now, he wants to flick. He wants to do what? Y'all throw some things back to me quickly. What do they do? Oh, they afflict. What else? Torment. They torment. Come Confused. on, what else? Huh? Confused. They create phobias. Yes. Huh? They make you hallucinate. They alter your, uh, your perception. Yes. They do what else? They influence. Somebody should be typing this in your chat. Come on, type it in, your, in the chat there. 
whatever platform you are because you need to know what do they do because you cannot deal with something if you're not able to identify it. So the first law of deliverance is acknowledgement. The first law if you're going to be delivered from something is you got to be willing to acknowledge it. So what else y'all were giving me? You give me um, um, phobias, you give me torment. They inflict, they afflict. Huh? They, they lie. Demons, oh my God. They are lying spirits. They will convince you and you will be wondering like what? So they are lying spirits. They try to tell you who you are not. They will try to tell you who you are not. You will always tell a lying spirit. It goes against the word of God concerning you. So it's a lying spirit. Are you getting me? What else? Give me two more and then we move on to close. They create fear. They will blind your eyes. They mar your perception. They cause you to see things different. They start, they'll have you, you'll have people talking to their own mind. They'll have people convinced in their mind. Like a joker. Until their whole world begins to fall apart. A demon will tear your whole world apart. See, that's why I tell people, you can't be a deceiver in church. You can't be moving around in the house of God or around a prophet of God. And you are a deceiver. Because everything that you were blessed with, you will see it fall right out before you. Because a demon is a trickster. Demons also trick people. So your deception is going to peel off and show you, hey, you can't play with the devil. And he don't try to kill you. Are you here? Yes, so now let's go to being delivered from them. All of these things they do. They create phobias. They create fears. They inflict. They afflict. Okay. They do what? They monitor you. Okay. They watch you. They watch you. They probe you. They, 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 they become familiar with you. So these, this familiar spirit and familial spirit are two strong man demons that every Christian should be aware of. Do you know why? The familiar spirit is the one on the outside watching you on behalf of that witch. The familial spirit is the one that's coming down your bloodline. It's in the whole family. Huh? So now they already know. So to try to convince them of something that they don't know, it's like, huh, we already know. We've been watching you all for years. You, we know what time you get up. You, every time they say they fasting, you don't never fast. <laughs> they already know you. The, 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 it's called familial or familiar because it means of the same. Within, family. It's within. So the demon already knows. It's probe you. It watch you. It already see what your weaknesses are. It even can deal with some of your frustrations. It see when you get frustrated. We got to pray again. Why are we fasting again? I mean, all this church do is talk about demons, demons. No, we talk about Jesus, Jesus. If you can help get all your legions out of you, we can go on to now. Praise God, amen, the next level of power. Are you understanding? So God is now trying to teach you how to overcome. How to overcome so that when you overcome it, listen to what he says. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. You ain't inherit everything yet because you still ain't overcome. So how do I be delivered, prophetess? Anybody's ready? Are you ready? So I, everybody have these cards during the, 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 the purge. And so I told the people, if you're going to be, why is purging necessary? In Psalm 51, David said, purge me with his up. Wash me and I shall be made clean. Or I shall be what? Whiter than snow. So the purging is necessary because as a Christian, even though you are a Christian, something still can stick and stuck onto you or get onto your life. So I told you before that you have to go through several different levels of washing. Sometimes before you come into that whole man created in the image or that new man created into the image and likeness of God. It depends sometimes on your life and your lifestyle, your experiences and your exposures, what has happened to you and what has happened because of you. So some people, because of what has happened to them, they are now in a place where they need to go through a series of deliverance. Are you getting this? Some people, what has happened through them, through them, what they have caused, what they have done, they also need to go through a series of deliverance. So watch this now. Come on, let's get this up on the board. Amen. Is there anyone you can put this on the, on the screen for them? Is there anyone you can split the screen and put it up there for them? 
Amen? So watch this now. The first thing you're going to have to do if, you, if you're going to get delivered is you have to do what? Acknowledge. Acknowledge that you have a problem. So the first thing on top of this postcard here is what? Acknowledge. You have to acknowledge that you have an issue. Acknowledge that you have a problem. Acknowledge that something is going on in your life. Now, you can ignore it all you want, like a, what we call a, what you call it now, a, uh, a flamingo, or uh, what that big bird is, a ostrich. You put your small little head in the sand, but don't forget to have a big body maxima. <laughs> Are you understanding? So, it, it's no, you're wasting your time if you are trying to hide and the demon knows that as soon as the demon recognize that you are trying to cover for him he thanks you and he says oh you're such a good girl thank you for covering for me and now because why you have now given him power to exist uh, what is that yeah you get the pat on the back and he's down tapping you to say well done my good and faithful servant. So acknowledgement is very important if you're going to be delivered. Acknowledge there is a problem. Do not ignore. If you ignore, you are in trouble. But if you acknowledge, then the enemy is being weakened at the moment you start to acknowledge, I have a problem. There's something present. I feel a certain kind of way. I can stay on acknowledge all night, but I don't have the time. I'm sorry. But have you ever begun to feel some type of way in your life? Like, have you ever begun to feel like something isn't right? Like something is wrong? Okay? Like something is wrong. Like, I don't know, I feel a bit something. Like anxiety, like you're feeling like anxious. Or you're feeling a bit nervous. Or a bit, okay, there you go. You're feeling what? Off. So the offness you are feeling is a telltale sign that something is happening in your life. See, the way that the Lord created the human body spirit soul and body the human being rather is so that you can tell when something is happening in your being it shouldn't be where a monkey has to say <laughs> a monkey should not have to signal to you that <laughs> something is wrong this is why are you people hearing me in the book of numbers it was an indictment for a donkey to have to speak to Balaam the prophet. Are y'all getting me tonight? A dumb donkey. I have to stop Balaam and say, ah, can you not see? 90 degrees to the right. A angel. And he's like, where? Where? He's still not seeing it. And the donkey's like, oh my God, what is this? He's like, you know, uh, what foolishness is this? I am the donkey, you are the master, and you are the one who cannot see an angel. And yet you're calling yourself a prophet. You can imagine the donkey saying, if you are a prophet, I must be an apostle. <laughs> if Balaam is the prophet and he can't see, the donkey is not the prophet and he can see and hear that an angel is in front of them. Then the donkey say, if you are a prophet, I must be an apostle. Because I can see on here. So, what am I trying to show you tonight now? Let's go, guys. Watch this. That demon is not supposed to be in your life. If that demon stays there long enough, the demon is going to begin to build a habitation. And he's going to begin to take personal ownership of your house of your house now remember when i say house your life so all of you wherever you are all over the world tonight i want you to see this quickly so the first thing you need to remember i already gave you all the characteristics of demons i already told you what demons come to do now there's something else i need to tell you what demons come to do demons come to take they want to not just siege but they their goal is to take possession their goal is to take over your house now you got the power not to let them take over because who mind it is your mind who will it is your will is your life so what do they do the spirit of the man they know they cannot enter that arena but they enter through what is called the soul so the de demon will afflict you in the solical arena they will do what afflict you in the solical arena 
Oh my God, I wish I had time tonight to bring this down, but I don't have much time. There's some of you watching me right now and you're watching me from a bar room. And it's because your soul is afflicted. And you are drinking one glass, two glass, three glass because something that took place, something broke your heart, your soul. Your, so this is why as a Christian, you cannot, you cannot be driven by your emotions. By a, a Christian, a man or a woman, you cannot be driven by your emotion. You cannot hang out in the realm of emotionalism. Your soul cannot direct you in the things of the spirit. Am I talking to somebody? You have to be led by the spirit of God. So that's why John said, I must decrease so that he might increase. I may be the most powerful river baptizing down here by the river, but right now a greater than I is here, I must decrease. Are y'all getting this tonight? How am I doing, mama? Am I going okay? So watch what's happening now. The person that allows a demon to get in, as soon as you feel a demon is present, you try to, you go on an excursion to get him out. Now remember, demons are not just for an occasion demons. There's demons of bitterness. There's demons that are, de demons that are liars. There are demons that are jealous. Jealousy, his name is jealousy. Envy is a demon. Strife is a demon. Gossiping is a demon. Backbiting is a demon. Are you all hearing this? Lust is a demon. Perversion is a demon. Deception is a demon. Are, are you hearing this? All of these are classifications of demons. Sickness is demons. All of these are demon spirit. But as long as you allow them to cohabit or live with you and stay with you, their goal is eventually to take over your whole house. You are beginning to host them. And God has said, I don't want that. I want you to be able to host the Holy Spirit. I want you to be able to host the Holy Ghost. Are you getting it? So now, how do I get rid of that demon? So some powers of demons, I have to be delivered by somebody. God has to use somebody that has, uh, has the ability to do it to deliver you. So somebody said the other day, there's nothing as a deliverance minister or deliverance ministry. I don't know. Whatever it is, I really don't care. But I do know that there's some of you will never get a demon out, some of the types of demon out by yourself. You will need demonic uh, deliverer assistant. Yes. Demon assistant. You'll need a demon coach, a deliverance coach, a deliverance helper. Because not all demons are made equal. Are you getting what I'm saying? But this, what I'm teaching you tonight now is when you've already gone to a church or you've gone to somebody out there who slay demon, cast them out or exercise them out. That's what deliverance is. It's exercising them out. Driving them out. Some people call it exorcism. But it is now setting the captive free from that demon. Your job is to maintain your deliverance from that demon. So that's why I said earlier, Christians can get whatever they want. As if they even want a demon called lazy, they can get one of them. In fact, some of them know where to find it on wholesale. <laughs> so you cannot be lazy. You have to have an account for your own life and your own soul. Self-deliverance now means I can get this demon. They have dragged this demon out. And now something is trying to enter back into me. And I want to show you how this happens. Now, be careful, be careful of thinking the demon is entered back into you. Because I told you after every deliverance, there's something that is called symptomatic demons. And what they do is they're symptomatic demons, which means is that the demon did not still enter your life back. They brought symptoms or things that will remind you or look like they have entered back when they have not. Now, some people let them back in because Jesus said, when a spirit goes out of a man, be careful. He brings to himself seven more worse than himself. So watch this now. Oh my goodness. Let me hurry up. Oh my Lord, the time is going. So what is going to happen now? You have to now identify, did it come back in or is it just a sy symptom? So whatever it is now, so you deal with it and you can always check. I can always check and I can see where this demon either is entered back into the person's life or it is just a symptom, something that is acting like the demon, but it's not really the demon itself. 
Are you getting me? Yes. Then remember what I also said. There's some people that have had the demon for so long that they still, they, a habit was developed because the demon was there. So there's like an imprint. If, you, if, you, if there was a chain on your hand and you had that chain on your hand for like, I mean, or watch for like, amen, for all year long and you never took the watch off, you slept with the watch, you did everything. Then what began to happen, Lord, that spot didn't get... <laughs> She took her watch off, and, and that's what when her watches is white. <laughs> I mean, like, what's really your skin color? But what's what I'm trying to say, amen, focus here. <laughs> watch it, you know, because people just take this serious. So let's get off of that quickly. But here's what happens now. The, the, the mark is there where you always wear that piece of jewelry. But so even when you take it off, the mark is still there. Does it mean you still have the jewelry on? Even though you took it off? So this is what I'm trying to say now. This is why, amen, after deliverance service is over, you have to now go back and do some, amen, housekeeping. Because even though the demon was cast out, sometimes a residue is still left on your life. And the, and the residue is there reminding you and got you thinking, that the demon is still there. So, amen, let's get the demon out. So you go to somewhere, you come to church, we do deliverance, mass deliverance, we cast the demons out. Okay, all the demons went out. Three days later, amen, you're still feeling like, I don't know, what was that? Okay, or something is feeling like it's attaching itself to you. Again, a little tap, tap. So you don't just go back to sleep and eat cornbread. No, you wake up and you acknowledge that, wait a minute, something, an issue is trying to rise back up again. I'm starting to feel depressed again. I'm starting to feel overly anxious again. Then you believe. The next step is believe that God wants to deliver you. Believe is that next step. And then you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The next thing is confession. So now I'm confessing that, wait a minute, I have a problem going on here. I acknowledge it, but I'm confessing that Jesus is the one that have delivered me before and he's going to deliver me some more. Do you get what I'm saying? Then now after that, I go to what is called repentance. Repent. So if you're going to deliver yourself, you have to repent. So you acknowledge that there is a problem, that there's something else doing wrong. I did do something. Oh God, please forgive me. So now watch this now. And then you repent. So repentance, amen, is not just saying, amen, you know, a sinful prayer. Repentance is acknowledging that I have done something wrong. And I need to be forgiven of it. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, remember, don't move into guilt and condemnation. Feeling guilt and condemnation is going to attract more demons to you. So all I'm saying to you to do is, first of all, acknowledge, then believe, then confess. But now you're repenting. Because now you're saying, God, I have maybe opened a door somewhere. Or there's something going on in my life that would have caused these more demons to come back to me. Are you getting me? So when you break the heads, the serpent came back in. So now you're repenting of it. But even if you're not sure if you did something, I still feel people repent anyhow. I repent of things seen and unseen. Sins known and unknown. If you ever hear my prayers early in the day, you'll understand. So that's important. After repentance, I ask the Lord to cleanse me. So I go through a time of what cleansed me cleansing and what is that cleansing he says by the washing of the water by the word so i will ask holy spirit cleanse me wash my temple wash my mind wash my life out i repent now i'm cleansing now i'm asking god to do a work in my heart purify my heart towards you but watch this now i'm going and asking him all these things purge out blot out Take everything out. Even if I know that there's something in my family that they've been doing that is not righteous, I want to ask God to have mercy upon my life and to take away that practice, take away that sin that's looming in my family. Even though I'm not the one doing it. Do you get it? Now, now then I address the demon. I directly address the demon. You unclean spirit. And clean, they ain't answering you. You lust spirit. Ooh, I can't believe you call me out like this. You call him out again. You unclean spirit. You lust spirit. 
Come out of me. You have to deal with the demon aggressively. I'm trying to say you have to shout through the whole neighborhood on a microphone and break up the whole apartment complex. But you have to approach the demon in a manner that he knows you know he is there. Am I talking to somebody? You unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. You lost spirit. I rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. I stop you. That's what the word rebuke means. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stop you. I see you. I, I, I know you are here. I see you. I acknowledge you are here. Now, in the name of Jesus, come out of my life. Or you can go to the next step, which is I bind you. I stop you. So rebuke is to stop, to acknowledge. And bind is also to further stop and acknowledge. So I am tying you up from continuing to operate in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you now to leave my life. Yeah. I command you to do what? Leave my life. To leave my life. Come out of my life. Go out of my life. Yeah. Are you people still hearing me? Yeah. So as you're doing this now, the demon is in a place of uncomfortability. Yeah. Why is he uncomfortable? Because you just call him out. Right. You call me out like this. How you call me out like this? Okay, come out of my life. Go out of my life. When you are now taking authority and commanding him to go, he begins to feel a sense of rejection. He begins to feel like he is not wanted here. I don't belong here. I don't feel right. I need to go now. So as I'm calling that demon out, he is leaving. Go out of my life. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you have to call that name, demon and tell it to go yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. You have to say to that demon, go in the name of Jesus. Yes. Go in the name of, you have to tell it to go. Yes. When you say to it to go, it has to obey your voice. Yes. It has to do what you tell it to do. Yes. Because why? It has no legal rights. Yes. It has to do what? No. It has to go. So now watch this. As I am commanding that demon to go out, it is going now because why? I am the host. I am the house. This is my private property. You have no legal rights to be here. You have no legal rights to squat here. Are you people still listening to me? You have no legal rights to stay here. I am evicting you from my life. I'm evicting you from my house. I'm commanding you to leave right now. And then all of a sudden, you will begin to feel that demon losing its grip from you. And some of the ways you will know it's losing its grip from you, you will either begin to, to, to uh, you, some people feel like a pain or some people don't feel any pain. They just feel as if something has left them. Some people, the demons leave and they may leave in a way that you know that they're leaving. Some people begin to cry. Some people belch or burp. Some people may spit something up. Are you understanding what I'm But they're like gases. But when you have destroyed their place of comfortability, they begin to pass out of your body. And they know they have to go out. So, God is saying tonight, you have the power to deliver yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you tell one to go, he must go. He has to leave. He's transgressing. So you say, leave and go out of my life. And then now he has to obey you. Yes. After that has happened, you, be, you go into prayer. But you have to do it with authority. Yes. The last thing I want to tell you is self-deliverance. Shouting at a demon, screaming at a demon, trying to scare a demon, trying to look ugly at a demon, <laughs> does not move a demon out. A demon is going to move because of one common denominator. On, and that is the name of Jesus. Jesus. A demon, you can bark at a demon, the demon will bark back at you. You can do whatever you want to take, do whatever scare tactic, the demon is going to stay right there and say, eh, who are you? Because why? The demon is only subject to the voice or to the name of Jesus Christ. So no matter all of this that we sometimes do or we go through during a deliverance service, I'm just, I'm just telling you, the demon is only going because it hear one name. 
And that's the name of Jesus Christ. No other name. So self-deliverance is the same way. If the demon is going to leave you, he's leaving you because you told him to go in Jesus' name. After that, you may apply uh, the anointing oil on yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Or you may, you may uh, uh, apply the anointing oil. Or you, you begin to get rid of all the things that may have attracted that demon yes. to be in that house. Because if you don't, they're going to come back to collect their charms. To collect their things. So if you have idols in your house, idols in your life, charms in your body, things or things that would have... Or you don't go back to fornication because if you go back then more demons are coming. Yeah. You don't go back to consulting with a witch doctor because more seven more demons are coming. You don't, are you getting what I'm saying? So these things that must stop, it must go to an end. Self-deliverance means I am prepared now to end everything I'm doing. Everything that is contrary to the will of God, I'm prepared to stop. Everything that I'm doing wrong, I'm prepared to stop. Are you hearing me tonight, students? Everything that you are doing that is not, uh, not in divine planning of God, you are prepared to stop, you're prepared to change it. And as this is now, you're on the pathway of self-deliverance. You, 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 you thank God for the one who has delivered you in the church. You thank God for the prophet that God is using or the apostle that God is using. But there are some times when you are feeling like something is trying to come back to you, there is a need for you to self-deliver. That is important because now I cannot afford to now just, you know, just let them take me over. I need to self-deliver myself. I need to do something to myself to help myself to come out of this. So you cast out your demons. You cast them back out. They have to command you. They have to go because they already know. They, they don't want to come back and confront that pastor again. And you get what I'm saying? So you can clear them out. But if something is becoming totally overwhelming, then you need to go and seek help again. Amen. You need to come to church and you need to say, deliver me, deliver me. But when that demon has gone out, you don't have to be worrying about every t 500 more times, I need to get rid of the serpent. 500 more times, I need to get rid of, I'm, I'm going to show you this weekend how to deal with the spirit spouse, that demon that keep coming to rape you. I'll show you once and for all how he'll never come back again. But if you keep going into the corridors of pornography, of things like that, masturbation, things like that, expect him to keep coming. He's welcome in your house. Do you get what I'm saying? So you have to get rid of some things. Clean house, strong house. If you clean your house out, the demons will not be able to stay there. They have to go. Somebody clap your hands and give God a mighty praise. Come on, are you going to do better than that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just give God glory. Let's lift your hands right where you are. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I thank you right now that your people are learning more about what it is to be delivered. They're understanding that deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is what? The children's bread. Let every child of God be delivered around the world. Let the curse be no more. Let every curse that the enemy has placed upon their lives to bring pain, to cause shame, to wreak havoc, to cause sickness, to cause them to die early. Let the spirit of death be driven away. You spirit of death, go! Every foul spirit of death, every spirit of torment, I command you to lose God's people. In the name of Jesus. I command you to lose God's people. Jesus I command you to lose God's people. Jesus I command you to let them go. go in, Jesus in the mighty name of in Jesus. Name of Jesus. Everywhere you have entered their lives, yes. I command you to go. go I Jesus command name. you to leave. leave. In the name of Jesus. Shanda Raba Sopra Kanda Raba Shata. Roshata Raba Shakata Raba. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your feet. Father, we bless you tonight. I pray over every last one of you. 
wherever you are tonight around the world, wherever you are under the sound of my voice, I pray tonight that I was able to help you to understand the importance of self-deliverance, the importance of why you can't just wait or continually be depending on somebody to always deliver you. Are we understanding? Come on, somebody. So once you are, once you begin to understand that you've been delivered, amen, now, hey, you are free. But some things may try to come back and attack you or attach itself to you. You don't let that thing kill you. You don't let that thing take, take you out. You take it out. You destroy it. You defeat it. You drive it away from you. Command your life to live. If he said, if you speak life, you will live. But if you speak death, you will die. Speak life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. If you choose life, you will live. And if you choose death, you will die. But if you choose life, life, the life is in the blood. I command my blood to be healed. I command my life to be healed. Every demon of sickness go out of my life. Pray like that. That's how you begin to pray. You don't feel sorry for yourself. You attack the situation with authority and power. And you attack it in the name of Jesus Christ. Then that demon will go. He will have no more place to stay. And be comfortable. Father, in the name of Jesus, just lift those hands. All of you, amen, all over the world, just lift your hands. Come on, where you are. Amen. Just lift your hands up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift my hands before you tonight, I thank you right now that every curse is broken from off my life. Will you people please come? Hallelujah. Will you please come here? Let's just, I want you to do something different tonight. Praise God. Amen. I want you to, amen. I want you to believe God. For the people that have heard the prayer, that have heard the teaching, I want you to believe God for those people tonight. Because some people don't feel as if that they're capable or that they're able. People want to go out quickly on the streets and evangelize and deliver other people. And they themselves are not delivered. Are you understanding me? I want to go out. I want to win a million souls. But yet you yourself, you, you have an issue in your, in your soul. You have an attitude problem. You have a contrary problem. God has said, be delivered. Get rid of your bad ways. Get rid of your bad spirit. Cast that thing out of you. And then you can go deliver others. But right now you need to focus on, on getting yourself. So let's, let's lift our faith out in the name of Jesus. I break every stronghold off of the lives of the people. I break every stronghold off of their minds. I set them free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Those that are being attacked in their dreams, in their minds, wherever in their life, whatever is coming against their destiny, their purpose, I curse it and I command it to lose them and go. I command it to lose them and go. I command it to come out of their minds, out of their thoughts, out of their emotions. Those that are being challenged in the solar arena. Those that are being challenged, God, that they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. Oh, God, they feel some kind of way tonight. They feel a spirit of anxiety. They feel a spirit of discouragement. They feel a spirit of weariness. They speak the spirit of heaviness. I command those unclean spirits to go from them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the people be free by the blood of Jesus. Let them be set free by the blood of Jesus. I lose them right now in the name of Jesus. I lose them from every strong man, strong man and every stronghold. I lose them from every struggle. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. So, God bless all of you. I know that you all were blessed. I know that you all were help some way or the other thank you Jesus I know that you will help some way or the other so I want you to go back and listen to this again listen to the teaching again I give you 101 ways a demon can attack or afflict your life I did that in the first half and then the second half I told you how you can be delivered self delivered from them you know it's interesting that you can either have somebody keep fishing for you or someone can show you how to fish. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. And that's what a good teacher will do. Yes. A good teacher 
will not just keep giving you a fish, but they will show you how to eventually fish so that you can live, you can feed yourself. So that's what my assignment, a part of my assignment is in this hour. Amen. Re revealing all of the realities, even of the invisible realm, the spiritual realm. But I am so anxious to reach to the realms of the heavenly realms. And I've, as I've been teaching you, uh, you know, about the, the angelic and all the other creatures and beings that we have at our arsenal, that we have at our use, that, that are helpers, amen, that are heirs to them, that are uh, ministering spirit to us who are heirs of salvation. So I want to get on to this more, but of course there's so much out, there's so much, uh, you know, I have to help so much other people, amen, but tomorrow night is going to be powerful, so everyone should still come. Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow we're going to break some more chains, set some people free from their struggle. So come tomorrow night everywhere you are. 7301 uh, West Oakland Park Boulevard, Lauder Hill, Florida. 3331. Amen. Somebody should just put that right on there. Log that in their phone. Whatever you do this weekend, make your way to BFOMI. It's going to be powerful. Right here in Fort Lauderdale, we're gonna we're gonna do whatever it takes to get you free. Amen. We're gonna do whatever it takes. <laughs> so come on out, the doors open from like about 6:30, 6, 6:30. So come, it's gonna be powerful. Amen. We'll make room for you, we'll make space for you so that you're able to get into the building. Amen. And God is gonna bless you and your whole family. So tomorrow night, 7:30, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Don't miss it. It's going to be powerful. Praise God. Amen. So I'm very excited. And I, I honestly, I can't, I can't even wait myself to see what's going to happen. So make sure you're coming. Amen. And may the Lord bless you. If you're not a Christian, just remember that Jesus loves you. You can give your life to him. Give him your life today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for another time. Give him it right now. God is married to the backslider and he wants to save you and set you free. In Jesus Christ's name, Father, thank you for those that will give their life to you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. I also want to give those of you the opportunity to sow, those of you that want to give into this ministry. We win souls here. So if you want to sow into the ministry, you can do so. My website is right up there on the screen. Amen. MaddieKnowledge.org. You can sow. You can give right into this ministry or believers' faith. Amen. Hallelujah. You can just sow. We win souls. We preach the gospel. Amen. I told someone the other day, we don't sell cigars and bears. We win souls. So, oh, God. So, um, so y'all can give. Amen. And then, of course, tomorrow night. Amen. We'll be back. Yeah, I said that already. Don't forget, we're, we're still fasting. Amen. Uh, consecrated before the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow is the third day. At the beginning of each month, we fast for three days. And throughout the month, we fast on Wednesdays. Amen. So you can be a part of it. Hallelujah. So don't forget, even if you have a prayer request, call the prayer call center. Our operators are always there. They want to take your prayer request. You see people getting so many miracles. Amen. So call our prayer call center. We want to help you. Amen. Don't forget at the end of October is going to be our spiritual warfare conference. Amen. So I'm telling you, it's going to be, I mean, amazing. So we also, we start on the 26th and we go straight through to the 30th. This month is a very, very careful month. And it should be a prayerful month. The people in that kingdom, they have certain times of the year that they call them their high days. So I want y'all to be careful in this season. Be very prayerful. Amen. Cover yourself in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, I was telling the people in the class, I don't, I, I travel with my Engedi oil. I anoint myself, you know, and I do it because why? I want to make sure that I am always covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I cover all of you in that same blood. But sometimes it may take something else. Show me your faith by your works. So get your oil. It's there in the bookstore. And um, let's trust God that even in this season of wickedness, 
the glory of God will shine upon you. Ain't nothing going to be able to touch you. Why? Because you got the power in the name of Jesus. So that's how you function. But just be careful. We don't celebrate their holiday, y'all. We don't celebrate Halloween. We don't put goblins and witches and things outside our front door. We don't even put pumpkins out. Lest they be confused. Are you understand me? <laughs> we put the blood of Jesus out there. We celebrate Jesus. We're Christians. We don't celebrate their holidays. Thank you, Jesus. So to God be the glory. We celebrate the Jews. Just celebrate uh, um, Yom Kippur. You know, so we acknowledge those. Those These are things that we acknowledge. But we don't celebrate with the kingdom of that kingdom that is of satanic orders. So be a Christian, indeed. And may the Lord bless you. Those of you that are giving, amen, you can just lift your seat up if you've given already. Thank you so much. You can also give through Super Chat. You can also give through Push Pay or Cash App or our website. Wherever you've given tonight, let me pronounce a blessing over you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that has given, everyone that has sown. Let their seed possess the gates of them that hate them. Let their seed, oh God, speak volumes for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, give them back a bountiful harvest. Give the people back a mighty harvest. Give them a harvest that will never be taken away from them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now that they're blessed going out and coming in from this time forward, even now and forevermore. Everybody say amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Father, bless in the name of Jesus. Bless in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise tonight. Thank you. God bless you so much, believers. We love you. And we have a personal knowledge myself. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you right here tomorrow night. Amen. And another powerful time in the presence of the Lord. God bless you all. See you soon.